I'm Gary Kelson, these are my parents, Lee and Annette, and welcome to yours truly, a family cabaret. Here we are in the apartment I think about most when I think about my parents, Melody Manor. Tonight, a journey about my father, Lee Kelson, his career as a crooner, his love of music, and his life in and out of show business. I was there too, you know. A showgirl, a dancer. A rocket. You were there, Ma, like a roadblock. Oh, get on with it. Uh, where was I? Good evening. Like Hitchcock is opening lines from his TV series. Good evening. <laughs> Not bad. My old man over there could have been a contender. Could have been. I was a contender. Not in a boxing ring. Showbiz. Hell, he might have been a champ. Might have been, could have been, Gerola. Looks, personality, talent, he had all the tools. All the tools. I had a career. He was a crooner in the fabulous 1940s. They called him the romantic baritone. The ghost of Russ Columbo. Anybody here old enough to remember the name Russ Columbo? Me. Ma, I'm talking to the nice people. Oh, nice is good. Russ Columbo died in a freak gun accident. Many thought he was a better crooner than Bing Crosby. Anybody here old enough to remember Bing Crosby? Well, tonight, you're going to hear about Lee Kelson. That's it. That's it. <laughs> True story. Leo, with love and respect, I call my dad Leo. Leo is singing in a Chicago club. Early, he sees this guy sitting at the back, singing, all alone. Never said a word. Just sat, smoked, watched, listened. Leo says, hey, Who's a stiff? Sitting still as a statue, way in the back. Never applauds, never reacts. It's creepy. Oh, uh, that's just the new kid on the block. His name is, uh, Frankie Sinatra. Never heard of him. When Old Blue Eyes was a nobody, he came to see my dad sing. Leo is called, the ghost of Russ Columbo. If Sinatra wanted to hear Columbo dead in 1934, next best thing was seeing Leo live in Chicago. And I love to hear Sinatra, America's greatest. The chairman of the board. Yet musically, you one-upped him. You played a hell of a piano. Ah, uh, Steinway. <laughs> bum -bum -bum. Leo also wrote all the catchy tunes you're going to hear tonight. Leo, you will always be my hero. What am I, chop liver? Ma. Once upon a time, Leo took his beautiful rocket wife, Annette, my mother, a professional dancer since she was 16, a showgirl, a rocket, even a dance captain. Hey, Ma, kick for the nice people. You need money for that. Lots of money. They see Sinatra at the Fountain Blue Hotel, Miami Beach, early 1960s and then down to the Poodle Lounge where Sinatra and his crew chilled. Leo wanted to talk to Sinatra. Hey, Frank, hey, remember the band box, late 30s? You listening to me sing? <laughs> but now look at you, singing at the Fountain Blue. Security around Sinatra, airtight. But Leo managed to pick up something that night. What, the clap? Oh, Ma, you tell it. Goon number one is leading us away. Goon number two barrels into the room, holding high two large magnums. Hey, Frank, I got the coffee. Lee asked the waiter. What's Sinatra drinking? 
Jack Daniels. Fetch me one. One sip of Jack, he was hooked. Drank it every day, even on the day he died. No, no, no. I embraced Jack. Sounds healthier than hooked. I, I, they might be wondering. Okay, okay, where are we along? going with this? Yeah. Let's keep it moving. Yeah. This musical journey starts with a phone call. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the main event of the evening from Jamaica, Queens, New York, weighing in at 115 pounds, former captain of the Rockettes, one time Ziegfeld girl, Annette St. Clair Kelson. I love my mother, I mean, what's not to love? But she crushed Leo's dreams and career, not once, but twice, okay. and- cut this out. Lee, cut it. Cut the music. He's too vain to get a hearing aid. Fabula! Thank you. Did I scare you? Sorry. So you're making me out to be the villain? There has to be a villain. Right? Okay, do what you gotta do. But let them decide. Ma, you never in your life ever supported- Carola, be nice to your mother. Thank you, Babela. Oh. <laughs> That's my girly. She's got that certain nothing. And I can't do without her. I am really mad about her. She's the one that I adore. It's early evening. I'm in California. I am in a dark, dark mood. My back is killing me. My mother from Miami Beach. Talk to your old man. He's driving me crazy. Uh, down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Will you Frasier. shut up? I'm on the phone with Gary. I try to remember, and I sigh with regret. You forgot to remember, and I forgot to Forget. If he was in my Babylon, I'd shove a steak knife in his ribs and twist. Ma, what is the problem? I can't. Because of dreams we share. I thought you cared a lot about Never me. Never stops. But now it's easy to see. I can't go to the laundry room about without him following me like a dog barking. How long you been gone? Goyly, don't leave me. He follows me like a puppy. Still likes you, Ma. Because <laughs> I'm doing the laundry right down the hall, me. and your father is so crying like a baby. But you forgot. Goyle, when will you be back? Where'd I go? Havana? I'm 30 feet away. Perhaps engagement rings are only things that poets write about. But love still lingers oh so tight about my heart. He watches boxing, sings all day long, and clings to me like a leech. Down goes Frazier, down goes Frazier. Do something or I'll kill him. Put him on the phone. You forgot hey, about talk me. talk to your son. Oh. Gerala, my boy. Leo, Ma says you're a pain in the ass. Give her some space, you hear me? Don't be a damn shadow. Uh, I don't like the yelling. You're yelling at your daddy, Leo. What's the matter with you? Hey, if I get one more call from Ma like this, you're in deep sh, deep sh. Deep trouble. Uh, uh, never again. Are you listening? Is my point being made? A point made. Game. Match. Good. Behave. Bye. And I hung up on my father. I never spoke to him like that in my life. Never. And as we part, you'll hear my tearful heart say, what about me? Oh, now it's easy to see that you forgot about me. I thought about calling back to apologize. No. Because of dreams we shared, I thought you cared a lot about me. But now it's easy to see that you Forgot about me. Hours later, another call. Goes to message. Hello, Gary. It's Ma. Where are you? 
your father. He died tonight. Call me. Oh. I call. Hello, Gary. Ma. His heart had just stopped and he died in his sleep. Ma, what did I do? Come home. I need someone to... I was screaming. Come home. I was screaming. I Come killed home. him. Ma. Come home. On my way. I killed my father, not with a gun, with words. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words kill. I get to my mother's. How about an amaretto? Sure. We look at scrapbooks, pictures of Leo singing. Pictures of Annette dancing with the rockets. Buffalo, New York, the night we met. The show, Strike Me Pink. My Babela, such a handsome devil. Every dancer on that crew, and believe me, all of them were hookers. <laughs> I mean, lookers. <laughs> Actually, some of them were hookers. All of them had eyes for Lee. I'm dancing in the line, rehearsing this number all day long. I am tired. I make a sharp turn, and I see him backstage staring at me. He winks. <laughs> I smile. We go for a drink, then another. He has a third, a fourth. I stop at two. Maybe I had three. <laughs> I, I had to carry him back to his room. But he had something. Handsome, funny. <laughs> I get him back to his room and he pops up. My mascara's running. Back in a chiff. <laughs> and he stumbles into the bathroom and falls into the tub. Help, Glaley, help. I can't get out. <laughs> and I can't get him out. I grab a pillow and a blanket from off the bed. I put the pillow under his head, put the blanket on top. I kissed his red nose, and I left. I was in love. <laughs> Keep vamping. Vamp until you're ready. Vamp until you're ready to fall. family and she rebelled. She drops out of high school at 16, moves to New York City alone and becomes a dancer. Wow, 
Leo was perfect for her. We were both dropouts, black sheep. My father wanted me to be a lawyer. I drop out to become a singer. That first night back in Florida after Leo died, I get up and rummage in the closet for another scrapbook. A folder falls off a shelf out of nowhere. What's this? What? Those? Let me see. Yeah. Oh, that's nothing. Nothing? Words and music by Lee Kelson? Dad wrote these? Well, what does it say there? What did you just read? Words and music by Lee Kelson. He wrote them right after he stopped singing, but they're no good. How do you know? He, he put them on a shelf, didn't he? He put them on a shelf or you? Ma, did you shove the songwriter into the closet the same way you shelved the singer? I love you, but I don't like you. You guys, you live with me now. These songs appeared in my life like magic beans. I kept wondering, what do I have here? Are they any good? So I packed up all the songs, took lots of old photos, and flew back to California. Leo sang with the modern airs, the Glenn Miller Orchestra. Then he took off to fly solo. I got lucky. We were dreaming big. Living large. My Babel got bookings. As an MC, a crooner with Pada, and he could tickle those 88s. My Goyley was with the Hudson St. Clair dancers. She called herself Annette St. Clair. So we were Kelson St. Clair. <laughs> they wanted to be the next Gable, Lombard. They wanted Hollywood. They wanted it all. We struggled. Get always borrowing money. I hated it. In the late 40s, I got a great booking singing on live radio, WLW in Cincinnati. So I asked the Goyley. Asked? You begged me to join you. We moved to Cincinnati. Staying in hotels week to week. Awful. Singing every night on live radio. And I had nothing to do. Chatting with whoever showed up. A lot of big names. Uh, Bob Hope, Jerry Colonna doing shtick. Um, the Clooney sisters, Rosemary and Betty. <laughs> they worshipped me. Uh, Could have had more than a Excuse few laughs me. with those. Uh, never happened, Goyley. Never happened. After that, we... Hit the road again. Life was tough. We moved to California, and life is good. I want two, three. When the dawn comes us stealing out of the night, and the sun begins shining ever so bright, and you welcome the morning, feeling so right, knock a wood. You never had it so good. Always moving, living out of suitcases. When you started a humming, any old tune, and you're out with your baby under the moon, and you find that December seems to be June, knock on wood. You never had it so good. Never putting down roots, I got sick of it. Skies are blue, surround you, stars are dancing above. Lady Luck has found you, and you're living in heaven because you're in love. If you can't be going.
So I'm working in the Georgian room in Santa Monica for two weeks. One night, the stage manager comes backstage and says, somebody wants to meet me. I'm in no mood. He says, you want to meet her. Her? I drag myself out, and it's Marlena Dietrich. She loves my voice, wants me to join her on a USO tour of Europe. The break of a lifetime. But Annette... I was pregnant. She didn't trust me. Oh, what woman would trust her man to go on tour with Marlena Dietrich? In her time, she was Madonna squared to the end power. Dietrich was hip before hip was hip. And here's where I become the villain. Ah, you dropped the curtain down on him. Why? He could have been... The Jewish Dean Morton. I didn't want him to go. Not with her. Sophie Tucker? Maybe. But Dietrich? I wanted a normal life. A house, a white picket fence, a family. What's so wrong about that? To make my mark as a singer. That's all I wanted. I'll go tell it to the Marines. For you, for me, for all of us. Well, I didn't want you to go. One injury after another, and dancing was out of my life. I wanted roots, a community, a family, a nice TV. Lee comes home, all wild-eyed, bushy-tailed, babbling about his big break. I'm going on tour with Marlena Dietrich. I'm pregnant. Am I going to let my baby a gallivant all over Europe with Ms. Dietrich? Lee was my love, my life. And I just didn't want him working with Dietrich. Let me ask the women here. Would you let your man take a gig with a goddess like that for three or four days, let alone three or four months? Raise your hand if you would. Now, I can't see you. But I'm going to guesstimate like 10% maybe raise their hand. So then I'm going to say the following line. I rest my case. <laughs> and then I'm going to say, if you raise your hand, you are a saint. Or a bit thick. Or having an affair with someone better. So she said... If you go on tour with her, I go back to my parents for good. And he said... I'm going... I'm gone. Good. Go. Go. So I left. So what? Good riddance. Three, four. Just a crazy mixed up kid. And she's got me out of my mind ever since she went away and left me. Should be glad that I am rid of the ups and downs that I knew, but I can't help feeling awful, awfully blue. She had me on the street. I was a beggar, a king. Depending on the mood she was in And now that she is gone I find I can't go on I guess I played a game that you never win Just a crazy mixed up kid And you surrendered. I did. And you came back. I did. I missed my Babela. I'm a fool, a fool, a 
Jamaica, Queens. They hated me. Your father called me a Jewish showbub. Oi! My father offered you a job. You thumbed your nose. A potato peddler in Times Square? It's good enough for my father. Potato, potato, I'm a singer, damn it! Why would anyone want to be the second Perry Como? Como? I was the first Lee Kelson. Oh, go tell it to the Marines. A family friend, Max Proba, got smart, left showbiz, and went into high-end furniture. He became wildly successful, and he offered Lee a job as vice president. VP, pretty cool, Leo. I wanted to think about it. Think! An offer like that doesn't come around every day. An offer from Dietrich comes on around once in a lifetime. Never came again. I slipped out of show business as I slid towards 40. He took Mac's VP job. Hmm. VP. I became a furniture peddler. Death of a crooner. Birth of a salesman. Ha! <laughs> I stopped singing and started selling, but... Still working on my pattern, shaping my routines. <laughs> he made good money selling furniture for 40 years. That's true. And whenever a furniture sale grew cold, I'd just sing a little song to keep the deal alive. I should have stood in bed. I must have lost my head when I Awoke and started the day You passed me by and all oh, the torment I am feeling I caught your eye and my poor heart began a reeling I should have counted sheep I might have been asleep Dreaming of someone as lovely as you A happy ending And even though I am a fool For just pretending I shoulda, I coulda I wish that I woulda stood in Out of my head, wish I was dead I shoulda stood in bed The Singing Salesman Secretaries love me. Boy, howdy. Hey, I plead the fifth. You drank the fifth. <laughs> I could sell anything because they bought me. The furniture just thrown in. You see, all the world's a stage. The men and women merely uh, sales with an entree here and an exit there. And one man in his life sells many things, most of all, himself. No mics, no lights, no music, no backup, no costumes. Well, a few very nice threads, but 
It's you and your pitch. You got nothing, but you work up something to sell someone else's goods. And if you got it, you walk away with cash. <laughs> Gobs of it. I could turn that certain nothing into something, and that's called profit. Money, he could make it. Money, she could spend it. Money. Money. <laughs> and we had fun. Ladies and gents, Leo and Annette closed their glory days in show business but kept right on entertaining. Sit back, relax, enjoy. Leo, Annette, places is their life after showbiz. I know a girl who has the most peculiar personality. I can't imagine why she always means so very much to me. Beautiful. Handsome. She is not. He is not. Talent. with love beads. 
I was groovy, baby. <laughs> out of sight. Oh, far out. And my goily, rocking a miniskirt Twiggy could envy. <laughs> we had our own living room variety show. And Lee could do an hour nonstop and always got standing O's. Ah, that was payday. Maybe I could have been better than Sinatra. Uh, go tell it to the Marines. Old friends would show up every now and then. Vic Damone and I would knock back a few drinks at an off-the-beaten-path Italian bistro in Miami. <laughs> and, and then in L.A.? Burt Lancaster. Burt Lancaster came out to see my set. We had drinks afterwards, Burt and I, but a friendship never happened. Kind of like a one-night stand? Uh, Bert was a big star. It was a kick. I live in memories and cry. I can't believe this is goodbye. I remember another day. The world was sunny and life was gay. Now you leave me, you say we're through. Have you forgotten the joys we knew? I know it's over, all over, and yet I find it hard to forget. 85 years young, singing to the mirror above the piano. I don't blame you for all the cost one must pay dear who's loved and I remember another day. Like Broadway, he did eight shows a week from the comfort of our living room. I never left show business. I just don't get paid for it. <laughs> Boy, did I love it. Oh, and showbiz loved you. Yeah. The notices in the papers always gave him high marks. You know, I was I the have one them here. What? Two columns from Boston, 1945, on the same day. Mr. Kelson would seem to be a candidate for a role in a multitude of musicals across the country. Hey, I forgot about that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> and see and hear Lee Kelson, the Schwell Singer, currently at the Latin Quarter, who sounds like the ghost of Russ Colombo. <laughs> I, I was the romantic, romantic baritone. <laughs> Oh, Goyle, you thought that I wanted to run away with Dietrich. Not interested. Ah. I swear, Goyle, I love my Goyle. But you didn't trust me. You know, uh, entertaining the troops, yeah. I love that. And Dietrich was all about performing for the troops. And yes, taming the beasts, both on stage and off. But I don't know that I was ever able to tame you. <laughs> Maybe that's what I love about you. I gave it all up for you. But I never felt that I could really make you feel how much I love you. Nonsense. And all that time, 
I was yours. Truly. Gailey. We were married 55 years. Frank Sinatra couldn't do that. We drove each other crazy. And Ed would pack up to leave. Oh, yeah. I'd have my suitcase on the bed. Goyley, where you going? Don't leave me, Goyley. Jeez, well, if that's the way you feel about it, go. Get out. Uh, Goyley. If I can't have you for my very own Then please go away and leave my heart alone I wish you weren't here Your kiss has got me on a spin I'm afraid, my dear The game you play I'll never win I'm lost in paradise, the magic spell you cast. But when I look into your eyes, I wonder, will it last? Now I hold you near. I can't resist your strange appeal. And yet, unless your love is real, I And my packed suitcase would go back under the bed. <laughs> I'm glad you stayed. Well, somebody had to keep Gary out of trouble. I was always the one to discipline him. Uh, like when you were putting away his laundry, and there in his sock drawer, you found this little bag of pot and that nifty little rolling machine. Woo-wee. Oh, <laughs> I was furious. He was busted. He said, Mom. Marijuana is not evil. Have you seen a change in my behavior? No. Can I still play great baseball? Yes. Are my grades falling? No. His grades were consistently poor. But at least he didn't drink. Right. So I, he said, uh, you know, I just take a hit every now and then to chill, just like you and Leo pour your cocktails every day at five. <laughs> so I said, OK. When your father gets home, we'll all smoke and see if it makes us jump off the balcony. I get home. Your son smokes pot. My son? Your precious Garola. We're going to test it. Uh, does it mix with Jack? Jack's not invited. It's a controlled experiment. Uh, so we go to the balcony. Gary lights up, takes a hit, Passes it to Leo. I take a hit. <laughs> and I pass it to you. I take a hit. <coughs> I'm back to Gary. And it goes round and round. I'm feeling nothing. Nothing. 
nothing. Is that all there is? If that's all there is, my friends, then let's I tell be Gary friends. I'm okay with it. Just don't get caught. Uh, don't get caught. Uh, can I have my jack now? And I'll have a shivers. <laughs> happy hour. <laughs> it was a very happy hour. <laughs> Three, four. Was autumn when Eve came along, and somewhere a robin had burst into song. Something within me awoke with a start. Summer had entered my heart. The fall winds that brought me despair now suddenly whispered of joy everywhere. Just when it seemed that I had a chance, I stumbled into romance. Her tender embrace, her fabulous face, the heavenly look in her eyes, her kiss in her sigh. When she came my way Nothing on earth ever mattered so much As autumn Autumn and me Autumn and me Who the hell is Eve? I wrote that in my 60s. Then rewrote it with a very talented composer, Ulpio Minucci. Johnny Mathis and his people looked at it about 50 years ago to record it. Never happened. You know, Goyle, with a little luck, I could have been better than Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> You're high on something, Mr. Kelson. And I don't think it's the Jack. We had great times. And t oh. Better than these times. Yes. My date is here. <laughs> and terrible fights. Uh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah, we were members of the cricket club in Miami. Uh, yeah, nice pool, tennis courts, wild discotheque. Every year they had a talent show, and Lee would serve as MC, chatting up the audience, singing songs. Hey, Goyley, you come out and close the show with me. Do a little can-can. Uh, can you still can-can? Sure can. Three, four. Oh, that's my goily, maestro. <laughs> so, now the show's over oh. and the disco opens up. Three, four. You go downstairs with your friend Iris. I hang around upstairs with Gary, signing autographs for a bevy of old broads. All smiles, Carolyn up, I head down to the discotheque. Annette is dancing with a young stud, shirt unbuttoned down to his navel, gold chain swinging. He's twirling her like Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. So I push the guy off and grab Annette. By the hair! He dragged me off the floor like a caveman. She's kicking and swinging at me. He's throwing me out the door. Ha! I bet you got a million guys who realize you drive them crazy with your eyes and lies. Well, what are you oh. gonna do? This feeling is something new. My heart is so black and blue ever since I met you. Well, what are you gonna do when it comes to me and you? Better not say we're through, cause I won't let ya. I bet ya got a million dames with fancy frames. You'll die and suffer in the heart of flames. Well, what, what are you, you gonna, gonna do? do? Well, well, what are you gonna do? do? I'll tell, tell you now, now it's nothing else but you're gonna, gonna be the one, one for me. The only one you'll you wait and see. Now, Gary pitched 
practice pitches the same way I practice music. He threw a slider as precisely as I'd bend a note. A fastball as sharp as a punchline. As a junior, Gary pitched the Miami Beach high tides to the Florida State Championship. You were so proud. That's my boy! <laughs> The Washington Senators, managed by the great Ted Williams, chose my boy in the 13th round, 300 pick. But Gary had injured his arm. 500 innings by the time he was 19. Today, they've got an operation for a rotator cuff injury, but back then, and you took it harder than Gary. I did. Almost killed me. It was Gary's turn to step off the mound and out of the spotlight. I live in memories and cry. I can't believe this is goodbye. I remember Another day, world was sunny, life was gay. Now you leave me, you say we're through. Have you forgotten the joys we knew? I know it's over, all over, and yet I find it ever so hard to forget. don't blame you but all oh, the costs that we must pay to hear who've loved and lost they say you live and learn but how a heart can burn when we remember another day I remember visiting you once in La Jolla. <laughs> Almost killed myself scampering around on the rocks at the cove. You saved my life. You reached out to catch me right before I was going to topple. <laughs> that night, I'm guest of honor at a spontaneous concert, a gathering of 30 people, all Gerola's friends. My favorite gig ever singing for your friends. I stopped the music, I sure rang the bell. I'm really living, my future looks swell. My baby loves me and all is so well. Just lucky I guess, oh yes. No more or no less, I gotta confess. Just lucky. I guess. We all have special numbers. For me, 26. I wore 26 when I played baseball. Leo died on January 26, 1998. Exactly nine months later to the day, October 26th, early in the morning, I pop up, wide awake, and feel there's a presence in the room. I glance at a digital clock, red numbers, 4.22 a.m., 4 and 22, 26. From the window, an eerie white light streams in. I hear footsteps. I live alone. I'm scared. I curl up in a tiny ball in the middle of the bed. The mattress drops, sinks. Someone is sitting on the bed. Leo, is that you? Then a pressing on the back of my head. I freeze. 
try it. Touch the back of your head, lightly. Would you do that, please, for me? Thank you. That's Leo giving you a kiss. He always woke me or put me to sleep with a kiss just like that. I lay there curled up for an hour, maybe two. I'm paralyzed, soaking this all in. He was there, Leo was there. I'm electric for days. When I told my mother, she said, He always loved you more. He never visits me, not even in my dreams. Ma. I always go to think, asleep thinking I'll dream about him, nothing. Ma. A year or two later, she says, I saw him. Who? Your father, last night in a dream. It was in an empty theater, and he was sitting on top of a grand piano, wearing a white dinner jacket, with his arms open wide, as if to say, come to me, baby, come to me. We had a great life. No fame or fortune, but we knew the famous and fortunate. Perhaps your father had more talent than I ever wanted to admit. In Chicago, Lee met Benny Goodman in elementary school music class. Goodman picked clarinet and Babel chose piano. And uh, Goodman used to say, I wish I could play clarinet as well as you play piano. When the Modernaires played Chicago, they used to play this fancy cafeteria where Liberace played, a nobody then. Well, one night, he told Lee how much he hated it there and how he hoped for something better. Lee introduced him to an agent and his career took off. He couldn't thank Lee enough. He tried, but Lee wasn't buying if you catch my drift. In New York, Lee sang on Jackie Gleason's radio show before the honeymooners. Years later, we were dining with four other couples in Miami Beach, and Gleason was in town, taping his variety show, and holding court not 20 feet away. Well, Lee told the table he'd worked with Gleason, and this wise guy says, I don't believe you. Well, my babela got up from that table, walked towards Gleason, who, when he saw him coming, jumped out of his chair, flung his arms open wide, and kissed Lee right on the cheek. Ha! That putz was put in his place. But he did pick up the check to pay for his sins in Anna Lee. <laughs> oh, my babela. <laughs> He wore cologne before it was fashionable and showered three times a day. His uh, friends called him sissy, but then they quickly copied him. <laughs> oh, those early crooners with their radio, warm, smooth radio voices. Oh, it was like at, late at night, they were holding you, crooning their whispers of love into your ear. And your neck stand up. <laughs> oh, touch it. Oh, my. <laughs> he had it all. I miss and love my crazy good guy, Babela, so much, Gary. I miss him too. Love him beyond belief, Ma. Ma? Ma! Take my arms, take my lips, take my love. Whatever you desire of me, I'm your slave. Any wish, any time, 
Leo and Annette, fierce, loving sparring partners for almost 60 years. Yes, she knocked Leo's dreams to the canvas, but they never went down for the count. I found these songs on a fluke. They could have landed in a garbage dump. Instead, they're here tonight, alive again. My dream came true tonight with you and I thank you all so very, very much. What lost dream of yours still sits in a shelf, hidden, forgotten, up in the far reaches of your closet? Think about it. 